welcome to the MVP show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Netherlands. He works as a Microsoft Certified Trainer and Consultant in Dynamics AX and or Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. He was first awarded as MVP in 2023. He's a strong project-based worker and analytical thinker. You can find links to his bio, his social media, etc. in the show notes for this episode. Welcome to the show, Ilka. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Good to have you on and uh, always love speaking to, to folks from the Netherlands, being that New Zealand was named uh, by uh, an explorer from your part of the world. But bef- yeah, yeah, I could, you must have a Zealand right in, in, in the Netherlands, correct? Yeah, my holiday starts in a week and then we go to Zealand. Wow. And uh, I think it's, it's related to New Zealand with the names and correct. the founder. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. Abel Tasman. Tell me, food, family, and fun. You just talked about going on holidays. W- w- tell me a bit about the food that you like and the, and your family and what you do for fun. Okay, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I start with family. Um, um, I married with my lease. We have three children. The youngest one uh, just uh, became five last week. So we have a daughter of five, a son of six, and a son of eight. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm a father with... Uh, playing a lot of soccer, uh, sometimes playing with uh, the daughter, with uh, the Barbies, let's say, uh, that kind of things. Um, but I like that. Um, yeah, my holiday starts in a week, and we go to Zeeland. That's a place in the Netherlands. It's, it's near the sea, so we like being on a holiday uh, around the sea, the beach, playing soccer with, uh, with the boys, um, being in the water. Uh, so, or we go to an island in the Netherlands, or we go to Sealand. So, uh, yeah, that that's part of our uh, holiday tradition that we want some place with water near uh, near the place where we are. Food, um, I think I like uh, Italian food a lot. So, not particularly the Dutch food. Uh, I eat that as well, but um, well, I'm more of the Italian uh, food. I think I like that a lot. Nice. So, yeah, that's a bit about me. I think. I like it. I like it. Tell me how you got to where you've got to in your career. What was your journey? Well, when I um, finished my school, I started studying uh, financial services management. So I started uh, to study as a financial. Um, I finished that study as well. But during that time, I had some uh, questions about what do I want? So I made a very different decision after that. I went to a Bible school for a year. So in the Netherlands, we have a few, and I went for a year to that. And after that, I did a study to become a pastor. So I also finished that study. Um, But during that study, um, I worked at a company where they used uh, Accepta. So it was like a side job where I worked, and they used Accepta. They implemented it, and... Um, during that job, I, I got more and more questions about, can you help us with Accepta? Can you help us with new questions from users, creating work instructions? I was young at that time, so um, I did everything I could to help that company by using Accepta. And I liked that a lot based on the combination of, of processes, people, and the ERP tool. So, um, yeah, I did some very different studies uh, uh, when you related to Accepta and FNO, Finance and Operations. But more and more, I, I saw the link between um, yeah, all the things I learned in study, like, uh, like finance, in my finance study. But the study uh, theology for becoming a pastor, I worked a lot with people. And, and I realized more and more that the people side is, is much important in, in ERP implementations as well. So I think yeah, everything came together. So at this moment, um, I still work in the in the FNO area because I liked it so much that I uh, only took more projects and and later went to work for a Microsoft partner instead of uh, working at the customer side where I started. Interesting, interesting. So is it is your focus now 
um, just on Dynamics 365 F&O, or do you do Business Central as well? No, only F&O. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on what's what's your thoughts on Business Central? Well, I always say it's the brother of FNO. So I think it's, there are two uh, ERP systems in, in that scope. Um, and um, I think where I see using FNO a lot is where the companies are focused in multiple countries and they need one solution for it. I think maybe Business Central can that do more and more as well. Uh, but to be honest, I don't work with that application, but I, I hear about that application, of course. Uh, but for me, uh, FNO is, is so big that, that we said in our unit, we really need to focus to make sure that you can reach the expert level. And doing both systems would not help me to, to do everything on the level that I want to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I totally agree with staying focused. What was your journey to becoming an MVP? How did that come about? Well, it's more like I like writing a lot and I like uh, sharing a lot and knowledge sharing. So um, um, I think. It was a couple of years ago and I, I realized more and more, I was like 15 years in the work field of Accepta, FNO, AX, um, that I realized I, I know quite a lot. If, if I look to other consultants that come to trainings that I give or in projects where I speak to other people, um, then I realized more and more with 15 years of history, you can explain things because you know the history of the functionality or you even can can tell the version where the function came in, in AX or Axafta or FNO. So I thought, I think it's time to share a bit because uh, when I started in the work field, I had a lot of questions as well. So Google was my best friend, let's say. I, I just had to find my knowledge. I Googled a lot. I, I went on trainings and I always appreciated the people that share their knowledge so that, that I could understand the functionality as well. And I thought it, it's now time for me to do the same because now I can help others. Um, and I like writing. So, yeah, I just started writing, sharing on LinkedIn. Um, and first, uh, it was um, not getting noticed a lot, of course, but I just said every week I do a new article and let's see what happens. And it was not that I wanted a big audience or something. I thought if I share the relevant things, then then it can help a lot of people. And well, that became bigger and bigger. Um, and I never had the purpose of becoming MVP. I just wanted to share. And well, that became bigger and bigger. And then I was nominated. And then I thought, okay, now let's go for it. Because of course, it's an honor if, if it's doable. Um, uh, so yeah, my route to become an MVP was mostly just starting doing what I like, sharing, um, um, share knowledge of FNO, help people in the best way I can. That, that's my passion. But yeah, it was like, it, it became more and more the route to become MVP, even if that was never the purpose. Mm -hmm. And how did you get nominated or who nominated you? Uh, Bilur. So uh, she is an uh, MVP in the, in the MV, uh, um, FNO part as well. And she is a follower of my articles. So she nominated me. And uh, yeah, I, I'm very grateful for that because, of course, um, it is a very, very beautiful experience if you become MVP and you get a lot of new connections and uh, a lot of new people uh, in your network. And uh, the, the, I think the power of MVP is that they are always open to help each other. So if you have a question, uh, we, we have a WhatsApp group, for example, with the FNO MVPs, we always help each other when possible. So that's great. If you had to look back over your career, what have been the highlights, the key kind of uh, inflection points or mentors or, or what? You know, when I ask this question, what jumps to mind first for you? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think one of the people that helped me a lot was, uh, was the manager on my uh, side job. So uh, when I worked at that company, I did like, uh, well, in that time that I worked there, I did three studies. So he saw me studying uh, different things, but he always took the time when I had questions to help me to explain things if I didn't understand it or let's say with Accepta. Uh, that, that was the first in Accepta 3 where I started with. Then I had a great tooling solution, for example, but I didn't understand why people didn't want to use it. So I learned about change and, and well, how people can react. Um, 
And I think he always trusted me in doing my job and, and he just let me free to do what, where I was good at. But where necessary, he always helped me also in making choices of, of what was good for me for future. So, well, he, he pops up in my mind <clears throat> at first. Um, and I must say my current manager, uh, she, she helps me a lot as well. Of course, very different questions that I have than, than like uh, 15 or 10 years ago. I was a, a bit younger then. And, well, I think I learned more uh, becoming older. Is, is that, well, sometimes you become wiser in things or you look different to things. Uh, but still, of course, I have some project as well where I think, how am I going to manage it? Or I need some reflection. And then, well, also my current manager, she, she can ask uh, the best questions, to be honest. That always helps me to to get good perspective or get new insights. I like that. <clears throat> you mentioned uh, that a lot of skills that you have, you know, learned from probably non technical areas and part of your your um, uh, your Bible training, that type of thing, is around people skills. And and you said that that was important. Can you clarify that a bit more? Tell me why is it important on a, you know, a finance and operations project, why the people skills are just as important as technical skills? Well, I think I learned that at my side job in the beginning. AX was implemented and one of the employees near retirement did not come back when the system was going live. And it was not her time to go to retirement already. She was near it. But she didn't came back because she said, this is too difficult for me. I'm not going to, to embrace this change. I'm not possible to, it's not possible for me to do it. And it was like a shock to me because for me, it was, it's just a tool. What, what's happening? And, and that was just like, I, well, maybe I did not even work with Arsapta for six months myself. And I already saw somebody that said, I'm not going to make this step. I'm, I'm leaving. So at that moment, I realized it's not only the tool. You, you need to, to, to focus on people as well. And I think still at this moment, a lot of attention implementations is going to the tool. We all say implementations are so difficult when it becomes uh, to, to like projects like FNO. And, and if I talk to customer, it's always like it's twice expensive. If I thought before, it's twice the time. Uh, we spent and that we thought and, and it, it's bringing me the half of what I expected. So like it's like implementations, it's, it's like difficult. But if you look to it, I think um, focusing on the soft skills can help a lot because why is it so difficult? Talk to people to ask them. But also I always think in, in the triangle, you have processes, you have people and you have the ERP tool. They must be connected. If we do all the focus on the ERP tool, it's like too much love will kill you, too much focus on FNO will kill the tool because it is, a, I think it's a great tool, but it's like a Ferrari. A Ferrari can be a great car, but if you are not able to drive, please don't step in a Ferrari because it's going too fast for you. So it's not only the tool, but we focus so much on the tool. And I think what I learned more and more is that if the processes, the people and the tooling are not connected in a good way to each other, you cannot solve it by doing more focus on the tool. That that will not solve that problem. If processes are not aligned in a company, you will not solve it with a tool. You need first to make agreements, and then you can solve it or let's say optimize it with a tool. But then it always comes back to people. Then you have to make agreements with people. You have to ask people, speak to people. So for me, people side is very important in, in that kind of projects. Interesting. If a new if a new person was starting out their consulting career, how do they? You, you know, it's very easy. They can go to Microsoft Learn. They can go, in, you know, and get training from a Microsoft certified trainer. They can learn the skills of the product. And I find, you know, my you know twenty years experience in this place, getting tech skills is the easy piece. It's there's an abundance of it. How do you get the people skills? Yeah, good question. Um, well, in common. I think it, it's, it's more difficult to get that uh, information from like a website because by people skills, it's not only about reading it and then understanding how it works. You need to practice it. You need to give examples. 
Um, I think in our company, I work at Emprise Academy, and that means that we are not only doing projects, we also give a lot of trainings. Uh, we decided to make workshops about that site as well. So we have, for example, the key user workshop, where we have a workshop for key users that are being key users in implementations of ERP software, and we help them to understand what skills do you need and what, what is a project, what are project phases, what is expected from you, also what are your responsibilities and how are you going to manage the task. So we decided to make workshops for, for that kind of things to also being able to develop your, let's say, the soft skills and the skills you need for that kind of, of actions. And what you see for me, it, that I, I give both. So I give application trainings, like I'm a certified trainer, so I can give the training for MBA 310, the finest training for FNO, for example. But I see that as a training. I, I share my knowledge and I help them to guide them to the system. If you look to the workshops, I also give the workshop uh, for, for key user. Um, that is really a workshop where it is interactive, where, where we have not only that I share about how it works, but I ask them, what do you experience in the project? I ask them for their highlights. I ask them for the projects. And we are discussing that to check, okay, why, why did it happen? What was your role in it? So I think when, when it comes to developing your soft skills, it's good to find something like a mentor that can guide you for that or um, um, make sure that you have a team around you and, and do like supervision uh, sessions, intervision sessions that you say maybe once a month when we are on the office, we are not only talking about the new features, we are also talking about what do we challenge in the projects and how did it happen or what do I need to do to make it a step forward? So I think it, it's really important to to find people around you that can help you in the soft skills. I like it. I like it. So it's really not something can be so much learned from a book or from a, a course. So so much as getting hands on and getting the peer. Yeah, and I think you. both. I think both. But I think uh, learning change with only a book is is very difficult. Interesting. Interesting. It's a, my wife next week is doing uh, ProSci training, which is all around change and adoption. Yeah, you know, we, so. we, we use a lot of ProSci um, um, in the workshops. So um, um, maybe the triangle that I always have in my mind, processes, people and tooling is also um, invented based on all the things I learned from ProSci that I thought, oh, they are giving you so much good hints or areas to think about. So uh, I think it, it's a good uh, focus. I like it. I like it. Um, what's your focus for the next 12 to 24 months from a skilling perspective? What, do you, what, what new skills do you think that you want to add to you over the next 12 to 24 months? Well, at this moment, it is like AI. So then it's really a technical one. Um, I see things coming from Copilot in FNO, um, but FNO has a lot of data uh, so there are standard functionalities of Copilot coming in FNO, but I think that AI in common can also help companies when they work with the, the amount of data that is stored in FNO. Um, so I think at this moment, I'm focusing a lot of what can Copilot do, but also what is the role of AI with big data and unstructured data coming to structured data. Um, still, I think I, I want to make it in the connection with the triangle. So not only focus on the tool, but also, well, in my trainings, it's interesting because if, if I give a finance training or a project training, it's not about copilot. But after the lunch break, I always ask, do you want to see something from AI? And people always say, oh, yeah, 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 let me, let me see, because for them, it's quite new. And sometimes I even start with, uh, with Microsoft Designer creating pictures to show them what is the effect of the prompt that I give to the system for the quality of the outcome. And then I, um, I show them in FNO what AI can do, but also sometimes in, in Office, in Word. And then I say, okay, uh, lately I was at a company and I said, you know your company quite well. So I, I uh, opened Word and I said, give me an article about this company for this specific uh, people site. And they were really impressed about what AI gave them uh, as result or that article about their company. It was really the core of their company translated into uh, into that Word file with, with the article. And I think people or working with people at that moment is not that I say we have a very great tool and it will change everything, but I want to know where are you at this moment? Do you understand AI already? 
what are your expectations of AI and what ca- what do I experience already? And I must say, I see so much possibilities, but also so much people looking with big eyes like what is happening that I think um, that will be one of my main focuses for myself to understand what it does in relation to FNO, but also to be able to train people and guide people in how to work with it and um, how to make your first steps into AI and, and what's next after that. Hilke, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time.